In this week's update, has the Fed pulled off the miracle? US rally broadens further. Sadly, Oz index remains stuck. But critical metals really firing. And gold rises as the US dollar tanks. My name's Gary Davis. As always, this is general advice only. And please remember to like and subscribe to the video. All right, let's kick off with a quick market perspective. Um, the US inflation data, which has been heading in the downwards direction now for some time, but a lot of people were um, hesitant as to whether it would whether it would be confirmed, and it, and it was during the week. And that really has changed the game in terms of um, how the stock market and other markets are perceived. Inflation is falling, whether you look at the CPI numbers, whether you look at the producer price index numbers, uh, whatever period of comparison you want to use, year on year, month on month, whatever it is, the results came in um, very encouragingly. And so naturally, the conclusion is that the Fed may only have one, possibly two more rate hikes, and then uh, we could be into um, a very different period in the not too distant future. There's still a few um, things that could go wrong. The jobs data needs to continue to, to hold up, but it's it's not looking ridiculous now that the Fed could engineer a return to acceptable inflation levels um, without causing a, um, a significant recession. Uh, six months ago, three months ago, you probably would have said that was incredibly unlikely. And the bond market is still saying it's incredibly unlikely. But... Um, you know, the, there's the old saying, don't fight the Fed, and they um, they may just get away with it this time. But the jobs data needs to hold up. They need to avoid overshooting. Um, because there's such a lag between interest rate increases and the actual impact that you see in the economy, there is a risk that they might raise one or two more times, and that's more than enough, and it overshoots to the downside and does cause a recession. So that's still a possibility. And I guess one that hopefully the Fed is well and truly aware of. There's also some, um, I think, growing acceptance that that maybe we, you know, we're not going to have a global recession or at least one of the dimension that many people were thinking. So that possibility of a of a much milder recession is now starting to emerge in um, in discussion. And of course, China can always uh, pull the levers. They've effectively got. Uh, zero inflation at the moment. Their latest data points to that, if you can actually believe the numbers. Um, and so China has got a great deal of ability being a command economy to um, to pull the levers and, and get the, their economy going again. So there's a few ifs and buts, but it's possible that we, we get back to some sort of normality with respect to inflation and we escape uh, the recessionary conditions. So the game really has changed. But finally, uh, and this would really need to validate uh, what's happening in the US economy, is earnings season has just started, and um, we need to see that beat rate against expectations uh, hold up in the normal range, which is generally somewhere between uh, the low 70% and, uh, and 80% mark. Um, now, they play a bit of a game in America where they the expectation bar is set low so that most companies beat it and everybody cheers and everyone's happy. Um, but we need to see that, that game continue. American stocks for the week, the S&P was up 2.4%. Gave back a little bit in the last hour or so on Friday. Bit of profit taking, but uh, nevertheless, a pretty strong week. And it's been a good half year. And history says when the first half year after a recession, uh, sorry, after a, um, a bear market, um, generally the second half is, is also good and the whole year is, uh, is solid. Now, a lot of people are flapping their wings about the uh, huge rises that we've seen in the big tech stocks, um, Microsoft and Meta and, and Amazon and Google, etc. But when you look at where that price chart has come back to. In fact, let's do that right now. Um, so this is Microsoft, and this line here joins up with the start of 2022, so 18 months ago. So Microsoft has returned to the level that it was at 18 months ago. Yet you have to ask the question, how much progress has a stock like Microsoft 
or any of the other big tech stocks made in all their various endeavours of activity, particularly in AI uh, and cloud computing. They've made enormous progress, and yet the price is back where it was trading at 18 months ago. Now, this may have been too expensive, and this may be too expensive here, but to my mind, this has got to be uh, this has got to be a, a more attractive uh, position to be in than we were 18 months ago because the business value has increased so much. Meta, sorry, Meta hasn't uh, hasn't yet made it back to where it was 18 months ago. It's been a very steep rise, and they did encounter all sorts of trouble, but they certainly seem to have engineered a uh, a turnaround. And Amazon, nowhere near where it was um, 18 months ago. So they're just a couple of examples where um, you know where maybe the valuations, um, given the progress, are not as extreme as a lot of people are making out. All right, the Nasdaq did well, so we've got a breakout now on the Nasdaq, which was uh, confirmed in the latter half of the week, occurred on Wednesday, and um, so we're now attempting to punch up into the uh, into the mid 16,000s on the Nasdaq. If we look at the S&P, um, similarly we've broken out, we're at a lower level. Um, so the S&P has not performed quite as well as the Nasdaq, but nevertheless, we've got a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, uh, unquestionably. We're tracking above the 20 day moving average, which is a sign of real strength when the dips only get back to the 20 day moving average. And it's a pretty pretty classic sort of rise, really. Breakout, retest of the breakout, and then immediately we get back into a series of higher highs and higher lows. Let's look at where the money flows are going. NASDAQ versus the S&P continues to, um, to work its way higher on that ratio. So that means the NASDAQ is outperforming the S&P. Uh, semiconductors, importantly, against the S&P, um, still doing very, very well. And, um, you know, this is one that I've been watching very closely now for two or three years. And it's certainly when the semiconductors are outperforming, then the general market does pretty well. All right. the uh, On the sector basis in the States, this is the last quarter. No change here. Consumer discretionary, technology, uh, communication services, and then finance, materials, etc. And energy, whilst it was the star of 2022, has been lagging on a on a relative basis, and has it has really gone more sideways than anything else. But as I've been doing, let's zero in and have a look at the last uh, the last month. So again, not a lot of change there, although um, energy. Um, the energy certainly had uh, kicked up to a degree, but let's just zero in on the last uh, couple of weeks, so the last fortnight, and um, we've got communication services at the top, then um, consumer discretionary, technology, finance, so all that's pretty much the same. Energy has made some ground, so energy uh, is the improver, consumer staples at the bottom, healthcare at the bottom. Um, so that's indicative of a market that's very much in an aggressive mood. They're, um, when the, the most defensive sectors of the market are, um, are the ones that are, that are lagging. So that's, uh, that's what's happening with the US uh, equities. The currency, um, very significant fall in the US dollar. As you can see, this is a weekly chart on the dollar. So a sharp move and we're now down to uh, under 100 and uh, we haven't been there for um, for some time. And just to complete the picture, the Aussie dollar uh, did spike up, but not to the degree that the US dollar went down. And that's partly due to the to the outlook for uh, commodities. So that's our uh, our picture in America. Um, as I said, the, the key for me is the, the progress those businesses have made. Not that I'm really that interested in buying those stocks because I, I think from, a, um, from a, um, a straight out valuation point of view, that even though they're probably better than they were 18 months ago, they're still not attractive enough for me. I'm looking for something of lower risk and there are those ones do exist. 
The US dollar index 99.92 was where we finished. The yield got up over over four last week. We're now back uh, down to the low 3.8s. Uh, the VIX uh, is back down to 13.3, but the uh, 10 year, two year spread is still at 0.91 negative. So the bond market's still saying that they're expecting a recession. Aussie stocks, um, 67.67 is where we finished. Our index gained 3.7% across the week. Um, it's a bit muddy where it might open on Monday because of what happened in the last hour in, uh, in the States. Um, there are several leading lithium stocks that are trying to break out from consolidation. So that sector is um, continues to look extremely good. Precious metals. Uh, gold was up $29 to 1956. Uh, a lot of that was currency, um, but not all of it. There was some outright buying of, uh, of gold, but a good week for gold. And of course, it was the, um, the inflation data coming down that was the, you know, the real determinant there. And I've been talking about what are the best conditions for, uh, for gold to rise over the last couple of weeks. And, and certainly that, that clicked in during the week. So gold could be set for another crack at uh, at the two thousand dollar mark, um, but it's look it's still not a commodity that that I trust. Um, I'm trusting the commodities where the demand and supply and, and demand imbalance looks an absolute um, dead certainty, and therefore um, you know we, we're going to see um, we're going to see buoyant prices in the future. I just can't say that about gold. I just don't really have a, a strong feeling about where gold might go. Um, it should be much higher than it is, given you know, given all the issues. But I just don't have that confidence. In Australian dollars, it did back off uh, a little bit uh, because the Australian dollar jumped up uh, quite considerably, but it's still pretty profitable territory around twenty nine hundred. And for precious metal stocks, we're seeing some real outperformance um, in the. Um, uh, in the individual stock section, you don't see it quite so much at um, at the global index level. But let's have a um, a quick look at um, at those. <clears throat> so I'll just have a a quick look at the ASX 200 just for the record. So we're still stuck, unfortunately, with uh, with the ASX 200. We're still trading at the same level we were trading at more than two years ago. Um, and that's you know a bit of a reflection of the composition of our um, our index. So not a lot happening there. But in um, let's look at silver first because silver had a uh, had an extraordinary three days after the CPI data came in. Huge bounce in silver from um, around twenty three to twenty five. Um, so that's um, you know that's about an eight eight nine percent uh, gain in three days. Gold on a daily basis, um, big spike. This was the previous Friday, and I mentioned I think there's a data glitch on that uh, particular candle. Big move on the CPI data on Wednesday, and just managed to help hold its ground uh, for the rest of the week. Um, but still, not a not a bad week. And you've got to, when you step back and look at the bigger picture, you can say that we are forming higher highs and higher lows, and we haven't violated that yet. So that's the picture with gold, and we'll just check quickly on GDXJ. Not a not a bad week. Uh, we've now got the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average uh, now pointing to the upwards direction, and the index is above both of them. So we're we're back into um, into a positive orientation uh, on the gold index level, but you can certainly cherry pick much better uh, outcomes than, than this one by looking at individual stocks and particularly the um, the more advanced development stocks in uh, in gold are offering uh, good opportunities as well. Other commodities, copper uh, 3.89 up a little bit, so was nickel at 9.73. Um, and we're seeing the um, the investment flows starting to work down the stock chain. Now, when a sector has been out of favour, and the money starts flowing back into that sector, it will go preferentially into the larger cap stocks first because that's where people feel safest. Um, and then it'll progressively work its way down the chain. And because we've got a very significant 
mergers and acquisitions um, momentum building around the world, then you know everyone is looking over their shoulder at, at who's next. And so the stocks with the the great assets, the great strategic assets, are um, but they you know they're not yet in production. They're the ones that are being um, being targeted, and so we're starting to see the money flows work down to that level as well. Uh, crude oil jumped up to 75.3. Um, we've got production cuts um, apparently now. How long they'll last is anyone's guess. Um, and you know, to me, the crude oil market really is a bit of a guessing game. Um, I just look at it from a very big picture um, point of view, the, the extraordinary underdevelopment for the last decade and the, the fact that demand is not going to come off at anywhere near the rate that, um, that everybody um, expects and is hoping for means that I think oil prices long term um, have to rise. But in the short term, with what OPEC and, uh, and Russia and, and all the other producing nations do with, with production cuts or Whatever um, that should help eat into the inventories, um, and you know inventories were uh, were higher, but um, but they're um, they're starting to come down now, and that should support oil prices and be good for uh, oil stocks. There's a spot copper chart, just hanging around that three dollar ninety level. Um, you can see copper inventories have come right back down again. This is a one year. Um, chart of the inventory levels and we're um, we're almost back down to where we were in in um, in April and spot nickel um, pushing back up again after a really sharp plunge down to uh, down to nine so wrapping it up um, a decent global correction is what everybody's expecting it's what makes logical sense and that immediately um, you know, puts me on guard to be looking somewhere else because you don't want to be where everybody else is, where the consensus opinion is. So I would um, I would be starting to look um, in in other areas rather than sitting back uh, waiting for some sort of global correction. And as I said earlier, history shows that when the first six months of the year following a, a bear market in the US is positive that it, you generally get the rest of the year and the year after that are generally pretty good. So as I've been doing for quite some time now, I've been extremely targeted, only working really with, with narrow parts of the market. Where will the demand keep growing strongly no matter what? So my basic approach for the last several years has been what is the pricing power to overcome inflation? Uh, what will do well in a recession? Where, you know, where's the demand going to be, no matter what? And um, and it's it's paid off um, paid off nicely. And of course, with the um, the mergers and acquisitions process underway, um, we've we've now got a lot of stocks that are attracting. Uh, a takeover premium in expectation that, that at some point in the future they may get taken over um, or th they've just got an X factor about them, be it the the size and nature of the resource, um, the quality of the management team, the success record of the management team, you know, whatever it might be, um, there's got to be something that makes them stand out against all their peers because there's just so many hundreds of different stocks and most of them aren't going to make it. Again, that's what history tells us. Only a small percentage of stocks that are out there, um, miners that are out there digging away, looking to um, to discover something, actually make it to commercialization. Portfolio analysts last week, um, we looked looked at the rare earths market in, uh, in overview and also I presented my rare earths watch list which is the, the best rare earth stocks that, that I can see out there, the ones that have got that X factor. And we also looked at the helium market uh, as well. So pretty interesting session last week. Uh, if you haven't tried Portfolio Analyst, it's available for a uh, two-week period for a $1 trial, and um, I think you'll find a great deal of value in that. That's it for this week. Um, there's my uh, contact details. I'll be back with you next Sunday. Cheers.